This episode is supported by Shopify, the platform I use for my online shop. Check the video description for more info and a free trial. Hi everyone, it's Justin. If you have a capsule wardrobe or if you just gravitate towards items that won't go out of style too fast or that are easy to combine with what you already have, you might reach a point where you think that your wardrobe is too homogeneous, too boring, too basic, too classic maybe. It's the main argument that I hear against having a capsule wardrobe. But a capsule can absolutely be unique and original. It should not get boring. So I'm going to take four timeless full pieces and I'm going to show you how to make them more current, more modern, more interesting. To do that, I'm going to look a little bit at the fashion trends, which I discussed in my previous video on this channel, but also at textures, materials, proportions, etc. The examples that I'm going to show in this video are readily available online. It's not couture tailor-made or anything. It's regular ready to wear. And I will link the items down below either for you to refer to later or for you to use the search functions of these websites to find similar items that you might like from your favorite brands in your budget, etc. Let's go. First, the blazer. <laughs> Blazers have been around for 100 years, typically what you'd call a timeless piece, right? They are great to style up a casual look or to style down a more formal look. They are a great intermediary. They're perfect for layering, so they're perfect for fall. <laughs> they usually come with shoulder padding, which makes your shoulders seem wider and proportionally to the shoulders, your hips are going to seem narrower. Being a pear shape myself, I like that. <laughs> there are tons of different types of blazers every year, every season. And yet what sells best is always regular cut, navy blue or black. And I think that's a pity. So let's play with the different parameters that make a blazer. Instead of the slightly marked waist, you could get a boxy cut. Or you could go the opposite way and make it very slim fitted around the waist. Why not with a belt detail like this one? This one is cropped. Crop lengths are great if you have a petite frame or if you're very small because of proportions. And it doesn't have the usual buttoned up closure. It has a hook and eye system that makes the two edges join flat like this. It also doesn't have the usual flat pockets, which is a nice change. Now, if we look at the color palette, which is trending this season, we have a very wide range of earthy, warm, foresty tones. You see that on this trend board from my previous video. So it's a chance or an opportunity to find a warm neutral instead of the neutral navy blue, maybe. <laughs> Here are two examples. The first one is closer to a neutral tone, while the darker one will look great on you if your skin undertone is warmer. In a nutshell, you can play with the fabric and the color of the blazer, of course, but also with the closure system, single-breasted versus double-breasted. You can make the cut, the length, the neckline, the pockets, everything vary for a more interesting look and more original than what everybody else is wearing. Next one, the cardigan. Also a timeless piece, which is perfect for layering, extremely comfortable. I live in Berlin and here no lady's wardrobe is complete without at least two or even three <laughs> cardigans. They're usually big knits buttoned up with one big square pocket on each side. Nothing wrong with this kind of cardigan. But if you own several ones, how to make sure that the other ones are really different. First off, you can mix colors. <laughs> it can feel a bit bold, but this way it makes the cardigan the centerpiece of the outfit rather than just the neutral overlayer. Instead of a chunkier knit, you can go for what we call a fine knit like this. It results in this satin feeling because the thread is thinner, so the knit is tighter and more drapey. If you want to tap into the colors of this season, forest green is there. I've seen a lot of this color on cardigans and it's typically a very peaceful, soothing color that fits a cozy garment like this. And Scandinavian inspired patterns are also very timeless and a smart way of adding an accent of color while keeping the dominant color more, more tuned down and more neutral. To sum it up, a cardigan does not have to come in a basic shape and one solid color. Next, the black pants. Once fall weather settles in, think colder, rainier, we logically tend to stop wearing white and lighter colors for very practical reasons and we gravitate toward darker colors. 
it makes sense. It's the time of the year when jeans and leggings start to dominate the street style landscape again. And it can feel like we're wearing the same thing every day, because we are. <laughs> so here is how to diversify your types of pants. First, look into materials that are not denim and leggings. You can filter out denim and leggings when you shop online by using the search filters on multi-brand websites. This example is woven wool. It looks a bit smarter, a bit more formal, but that's a nice change to jeans, so you have more bandwidth in your wardrobe, right? I own similar pants from the same brand. The tailoring is good, the construction is uh, good quality. It is a lot more comfortable than it looks, and I can really wear it every day if I want to. A smart strategy in terms of pants is to look for some kind of relatively discreet pattern, like for instance a plaid, which has the colors of the items in your wardrobe. For instance, this works really well in a closet where black, blue and gray dominate. You could have blue as an accent color matching the shoes or the purse. You could have a blue top with the gray purse. You see how these pants can be combined pretty easily in a wardrobe like this. Generally speaking, I also do think that a wardrobe, even if it's a small curated capsule, should always contain pieces that are not in a solid color and in a flat structure. You need texture and you need some kind of pattern for it to, to remain interesting and not get boring. A cut which is less common, but also really brings width to a wardrobe, in my opinion, is culottes. Halfway between pants and skirts, extremely comfortable, can be very elegant and very, very flowy, very evening wear as well, but very versatile because you can combine culottes with heels, sneakers, flats, whatever you want. In recent years, skinny pants and 7 8 length um, have clearly dominated the ready to wear market. This season, it's starting to change and I can't wait, personally, to see full-length trousers uh, make a comeback. I'm 1 meter 80, which is 5'11 in inches. So um, for me, 7 8 look like Capri pants. <laughs> then we have cozy sweaters. That's one thing I really look forward to wearing again comes fall. I take my sweaters out of the storage, back into my closet. I'm like, fall has officially started. <laughs> the basic, um, too cheap, cashmere and mohair sweaters that we see at fast fashion stores with the regular sleeves and a v-neck or a turtleneck do not reflect at all the width of possibilities that we have in terms of knitwear. So I'd like to suggest different cuts and styles for your wardrobe. You could go sleeveless and show off the sleeves that you're wearing underneath, especially if they're dramatic. More on this in a second. By the way, this color is also from this season's color palette. There is currently a strong international trend towards dramatic sleeves and historical shapes which you can see on this board from my previous video and the trend can absolutely be found in the knitwear category as well if you look at this sweater it really has drama and puffy sleeves and yet it looks very modern because of the cut of the bottom of it Another way of being different is by choosing a different knitting technique rather than a plain regular jazz in it. Here what you see is ajouré, where on the knitting machine, where all the hooks are, some hooks are skipped to create a, a hole, to create this kind of negative pattern. It gives the look a grunge touch, which is kind of nice again, and you see the fluffy, hairy texture. It's also a nice added element. There are also classic patterns like argyle, which you can combine with the uh, color blocking, very bright and intense color. It's done very nicely on this example here on the photo. And of course, you can draw onto classical cable knitting, which comes in many, many variations to bring texture and 3D to your wardrobe, even if it's in one solid color, but the cable knitting could also be a different color. Thumbs up if you found some inspiration for your own wardrobe in this video. It does take quite a bit of research to find the right examples to show you. But if you tell me that you find it useful, I can do the same video with timeless items for all the other seasons of the year so that your wardrobe never gets boring and so that you never run out of inspiration. One more thing, only for those of you who watched until here. I have a newsletter in which I inform you about new project launches, so new collections, restocks of my existing designs, etc. The newsletter is the first place where I would announce 
something if something was coming. So if you potentially wanted to be informed first, if something was coming, you would register for that newsletter <laughs> at this address here. Watch that space and you'll understand why I've been a bit more quiet on social media in recent weeks. I'll see you soon in a new video and until then, take care. Bye.